Come on, I want to see those hands. Has anybody here ever set a New Year's resolution? Okay, so about 40% of us. Has anybody here ever kept their New Year's resolution? Good, good to see, see a couple hands. What, what New Year's resolution did you make? A long time ago. She lost 20 pounds. Good job. I could use to lose a few pounds myself. Anybody else keep a resolution that they made? Yes. Be a better person. How did you do that? Just tried. That's a, that's a good enough answer. Just tried to be a better person. Anybody else? Go to the gym. Did it for one year. One, well, it's a New Year's resolution. You only got to do it for one year. So that's good. Yeah. Oh. To go back to church. And you're here. So you must have completed that. Good job. Yes. Really? How long does it take? About 15 minutes today, yesterday. Wow. Good job. Good job. Anybody else? Anybody else? No? Ben? Nothing? You ate well for a year. For, oh, okay. All right. It was for skating, but that's okay. That's okay. Well, this year, I made a New Year's resolution. Uh, which I'm not going to talk about yet, we're going to get to, and uh, you guys might even be able to help me out with it. So I looked up the, dev- the definition of what a New Year's resolution is, because I really wanted to grasp um, what this was and what this meant to us. So the definition is, a New Year's resolution is a commitment that a person makes to one or more personal goals, projects, or the reforming of a habit. A key element to a New Year's resolution that sets it apart from other resolutions is that it is made in anticipation of the new year and new beginnings. People committing themselves to a New Year's resolution generally plan to do so for the whole following year. So as I continued looking at what was a New Year's resolution, what did it look like, and what does it mean to us, uh, I came across of a list of popular New Year's resolutions. And I came across about 10, 15 different lists And uh, I came up with the top five New Year's resolutions that we make every year. I'm going to give you guys a chance to guess what the top five are. Can anybody guess what number one, the number one New Year's resolution across the board that we make? Yes. Lose weight is a part of it, but lose weight is probably the most popular one. It's improve well-being, so that's either lose weight, exercise more, eat better, drink less alcohol, which I don't think any of us have an issue with, quit smoking, and stop biting nails, which I actually do have an issue with. Uh, So improving self-being, so it has to do with physical things that we do that we want to better ourselves in. What would number two be? I think this, to give you a hint, this is something that we all struggle with. Yes? Get out of debt. Good. You hit it right on, the, right on the head. So improve finances. Either get out of debt or save money. Um, recently, I just had a beautiful little girl named Paige, and we opened up a tax-free savings account and started putting $10 a week in there uh, for her. Also, she was in the Mary Maxim magazine. She got paid $50 for that, so we started putting it in her bank. She now has more money than her parents do, <laughs> and she's not even six months old. So she has already hit that, and we're not even into the new year. Um, can anybody guess what number three is? This is a little bit harder. Anybody? Learn another language? That, is, uh, that would be considered in number four. So you're close. Number three. It has to do with finances. It also has to do with bettering ourselves. Anybody? No? Home improvement? No. Go back to school, that's number four. Give to charity? No. (laughs) 
<laughs> you were going to say that too? No, so it is improve career. Get a better job, get a better paying job, um, get a job that you enjoy. Um, luckily, since I've been hired here, I've really enjoyed my job here. So I did that already. Um, don't worry, my New Year's resolution is not to get a better job. Um, so I will be sticking around. Um, obviously, you guys now know, now know number four, which is improve education, um, improve grades, get a better education, learn another language, or so on. Then the last one, number five, um, which I think that we all deal with multiple things in this category on a day-to-day -day basis. Any guesses? Help others. Let me see. That could be rolled in there, yes. Anything else? Health. Health kind of has to do with the, the first one. Restore relationships is a part of this. Anything else? Put others first. That could be rolled into this one. So it, th this one is kind of the catch, I guess. And it, it can kind of catch almost anything in there. And it's improved self. Um, so it's become more organized, reduce stress, be less grumpy, um, manage time, be more independent, um, perhaps watch less television. Um, luckily, I don't have an issue with that, but playing less video games might be an issue for me. Um, so it's just interesting to see, um, because these were all like Wikipedia, things like this, what the world sets as priorities in our lives. What the media says, this is important. This is, these are things that we struggle with. These are things that we focus on. These are things that we should be paying attention to. And you'll notice that in all of these things, they are very physical things. They are things to, to better ourselves in the eyes of others. They're things that better ourselves in the public. Physical, tangible things. As I continued researching, I looked at religious origins and, and what did they do back then? And uh, the Babylonians made promises to their gods each year that they would return borrowed objects, borrowed objects, and pay their debts. Uh, the Romans began each year making promises to, their, or to the god Janus, uh, which was named after January. There's a factoid for you this morning. In the medieval era, the knights took a peacock vow at the end of the Christmas season each year to reaffirm their commitment to chivalry. So these are three examples of, in the past, what humans have done. So New Year's resolutions are not a new concept. They're not a contemporary, cutting-edge thing. They've been around um, since the beginning of time. And why have New Year's resolutions been around since the beginning of time? And I think the reality is, is that all of us struggle with life. All of us struggle with, with our spiritual life, with our physical life, with our relationship with people, because we have this thorn in our flesh, as the Bible says, that continually reminds us that we are human and that we have issue with things. So this year I made a personal New Year's resolution. Uh, it was a weight loss resolution. Um, my wife has been bugging me about it for quite some time, that maybe I could cut down. I've been the manager at a Domino's Pizza for over two years. Um, makes it extremely difficult because we get a lot of mistakes at Domino's um, and a lot of tasty mistakes at Domino's. So typically I eat well, but uh, that does not go well for me. So this year I decided to, to make this weight loss uh, resolution. And uh, it, when I was in Bible college, they always showed us the proper form for setting up sermons to come up with three points because then people lose you. I might lose you this morning because I came up with four points, so try and stay with me. Um, my first point, which is probably um, the most immediate thing that we think of, is what is the motivation behind making a New Year's resolution? So what is our motivation? Now, my motivation is extremely easy, and I have a picture to show you what my motivation is, which is my beautiful baby girl, Paige. And when she was still in Katie's belly, I made her a deal, because babies can hear you when they're in the belly, right? This is what I've been told. And I said, if you come out healthy, then daddy will get healthy. Well, it's been over four months. She is definitely healthy. 
So I think it's about time that I bring in my end of the bargain and decide to get healthy. Um, the other thing was, um, another motivation is, is pride for me. And uh, I was at Domino's, I was at work, I was talking to my boss, and he's been working out every day, and he's on this Atkins diet. And for those of you that know the Atkins diet, it's you cut like carbs out and you eat more proteins. Um, he kind of doesn't get it because he goes to Wendy's and gets a triple hamburger and throws out the bun and thinks that that's the Atkins diet. Um, so he swears, he, swears to, he swears by it and he says that it works. And so I made him a deal that I could lose more weight than him by February 1st. Um, now, he kind of put this price tag to it and said, I bet you $250 that I could lose more weight than you by February 1st. Now, any sensible man would say, no, I'm not going to bet money. I'm not a very sensible man, apparently. And I pridefully said, oh, I'm going to beat you no problem. Yeah, it's on. Then I went home and told my wife, um, who was not as happy about it as I was. So um, I need to take it seriously now and actually start thinking about losing some weight, getting active, uh, changing the things that I eat. Uh, so number two on my list after motivation is support. I think that sometimes that's one of the things that a lot of us miss um, is what support systems do we have in place? And I remember I've made New Year's resolutions that I've never told anybody to. Uh, I've never talked about it, whatever else. So it's really easy for me to just stop doing it. But now that my wife knows, now that everybody at work knows that I've made this, now that all of you know that I've made this, um, it's a lot harder for me to just drop out. It's a lot harder for me to stop because I have people who are supporting me and telling me, come on, Shane, you can do it. Come on, Shane, you're smart. You can do this. And uh, sometimes it is difficult to, to continue with those things or to let other people know the things that we actually struggle with. Um, but when we bring those personal issues or, or that sin in our life into the light, then it's a lot easier when we're working together as a group or as a family to work on that, to be able to get on that, to stay focused with what we're trying to accomplish. So that's support. Number three would be short-term goals. Now, if I said I'm going to lose 100 pounds this year, which that would be impressive, but if I said I was going to lose 100 pounds this year and a month from now I lost two pounds, probably what's going to happen is I'm just going to give up. I'm going to say, you know what, this obviously is not working. It's not going to happen, so I'm just going to go back and start eating McDonald's again. I don't know. But if we make short-term goals, then we have steps to slowly accomplish what we want to accomplish. Now, mine's weight loss, so I can create short-term weight loss goals or health goals or I want to hit the gym this many times a week. Some people, it's I want to read the Bible more. Well, don't make a goal that I want to read the entire Bible this year. Because that's a really big goal, and it can seem like it's really far away. But if you want to say, once a month, I want to read this many chapters of the Bible. Each day, I want to spend 15 minutes reading the Bible. And dedicate that to doing that. Something that I always had a hard time um, when I first became a, a Christian was, um, was prayer. And I wasn't, I don't think I was taking enough time for my personal growth with God in prayer. And so I made a New Year's resolution that said, when I wake up, the first 20 minutes of my day are devoted to God. And, and for probably three months, I did that. Then it started to get hard, then I came up with excuses, then it was easier to find something else. And I remember all year long remembering, oh yeah, I made a promise, I made this resolution, and I'd have to go back and renew that and continue that. So short-term goals are really helpful because they let us check to say, okay, we've made it this far, we can keep on going, and it actually is a motivation in itself. Then the fourth one, and I'm going to talk specifically kind of about my, my weight loss challenge, is where is God in my New Year's resolution? Where does God work into this? Because as I said before, a lot of the, the issues with worldly resolutions is that we, they're, they're very physical. 
right? It's what the media tells us. It's what other people tell us. It's what magazines tell us. Apparently, according to the magazine, if you're over 100 pounds, you're overweight. It's amazing to see the way that the world tells us that what we're doing is wrong. But I think that if we twist that and make God the center, God the focus of what, why we're trying to better ourselves, then we have Him to support us. That we have motivation from Him. And it becomes a lot easier. So with weight loss, I was, I was reading through the scriptures and I came across 1 Corinthians six nineteen to 20 um, which says, do you, know, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Now, in context, this exact scripture is talking about sexual immorality. But I think that the bigger picture is that we can worship and honor God through our physical bodies, through who we are. And I began to think, and being a youth pastor, it's a very interesting job, interesting position. Um, like I said, tonight, I'm doing an all-nighter from 7 a.m. till, or 7 p.m. till 7 a.m., so it's 12 hours with the youth. Um, I'm not quite as fit as I used to be, and I think that I would have a hard time keeping up with all of them. So, in a way that I can worship God is that if I'm going to be leading youth and running a youth ministry and doing these activities and doing these sports, if I was a 400-pound man, it would be a little bit difficult. So, by getting myself healthy, by actually taking care of my body, I think that I could worship God and really pour into their lives a lot more effectively. And that's through weight loss. There's other things that we could be doing as well. If, for example, if we said that we wanted to be nicer to other people, do nicer things for other people, by reading our Bibles and, and reading about good Samaritans and, and researching and actually experiencing this and, and doing these things, that is a form of worshiping God. As a form of, of really taking ourselves and, and saying, you know, why do I want to better myself? And I always tell the youth that if you pray to God, you better be prepared. Because, for example, if I prayed to God that, you know what, God, I really want more patience in this new year. Now, typically the way that God doesn't work, he doesn't say, oh, here's some patience. Instead, what he's going to do is he's going to give me an opportunity to be patient. That means I'm going to be tested in what I'm praying him for. Right? So what are other things that, that we could be praying to God about. You know, patience is one of them. What if, we, what if we say, you know what, God? I want more money in the bank. You know what's probably going to happen? You're going to have opportunities. There's going to be a new PlayStation 3 game that comes out that you really want and you really want to buy, but no, I'm going to save my money. If you're a farmer, there's going to be a new John Deere tractor that comes out, but nope, you better save your money. You know, if you're in the kitchen, there's going to be a new crock pot that comes out and be like, well, the old crock pot that I had is still good, so, you know, maybe I should just save my money. And it's funny how, how as soon as we're done praying to God and saying, I want more of this, and a challenge comes up, that a lot of the times, and I know from my personal experience, I struggle with that, I battle. I have a hard time sometimes sticking to my guns. But if we go back and, and start to focus on why are we praying to God? Why are we trying to change these things? If we're just trying to change it on a whim, it's going to be a lot more difficult. But if we start telling people, get support, figure out what our motivation is, set some short-term goals, and, and read scriptures to figure out kind of what does God say about in this area that we should be doing. The Bible is an amazing resource. I remember when I was a teenager, and, and I remember all these parents and everything were telling me, oh, read your Bible, read your Bible. It meant nothing to me. And then people started sitting down with me and saying, you know what? The Bible talks about that exact issue. And they would sit down with me. They would open the Bible. Now, it wasn't a King James because I probably would not have understood it. I think it was an, an, an NIV. And they sat down with me and they started saying, look at, look at what God says about these, these issues, about these things that you're dealing with, that you're not alone, that other people deal with these issues. 
And I think that sometimes we feel that we are alone in the issues and struggles and things that we deal with. I think that there's, there's something else is that um, I constantly um, do not like to feel comfortable at where I am with my walk with God. And that's sometimes a very bold and um, scary statement to say. But I notice that the times I'm really comfortable in my walk with God are the times that I kind of shift backwards. The, the, the times I'm really comfortable and just kind of said, you know, everything's going right. Those are the times that I mess up or I, or I fall or I stumble on something. And what I, what I find is that the word growth to me means being uncomfortable. You know, if you think of our personal spiritual growth with God, what does growth really mean? That means that we're building a relationship. Relationships aren't easy. I think that everybody in here knows that. Relationships are not easy at all. We've been talking at youth about relationships the last, I don't know, four or five months. And one of the key things that we talked about is that a lot of people look at being a Christian as a set of rules that you can or cannot do. I don't like to look at my relationship with God as a set of rules that I can and cannot do. Instead, I talked to them about this and said, when I got married to Katie, naturally there were things that I stopped doing. And there, naturally there were things that I started doing. I had this beautiful wife that loved me and actually wanted to spend time with me. So I started kind of cleaning up after myself. I started cooking for her. I stopped staying out so late with my friends. I was home a lot more. Were these a set of rules that I could or could not do? No, these were natural things that I wanted to start doing. And I think that if we look at our relationship with God as just that, a relationship, we realize it's not about rules anymore. But it's about what can I do to really make God happy? What can I do to grow my relationship with God? And then naturally, there are things that we stop wanting to do and start wanting to do. If God says, my word is God-breathed, that this is my word, this, this is what I've given to you, naturally, wouldn't you want to read about God? Wouldn't you want to read his words, what he's given us? If he says, I connect with you through prayer, wouldn't naturally you want to start praying? When the disciples went to Jesus and said, which commandment is the most important? He said, love your God, your Father, and love your neighbors as thyself. Wouldn't you naturally want to start loving your neighbors? And want to start doing these things for your neighbors? So I encourage you, if you are going to make a New Year's resolution, and I, I think it is healthy to make New Year's resolutions because it's a good time that we can kind of clean house, check to see where we're at, check to see where our relationships are at. But if you are going to do that, find out what is your motivation in doing a New Year's resolution. Finding support, telling other people, Having accountability partners and somebody who's always on your back saying, are you doing what you said you were going to do? Somebody who isn't just going to passively be like, oh, it's okay, you know, get it next time. But somebody who is going to kick you in the butt when you're not listening and not doing what you're supposed to be doing. That we set short-term goals and that we get on page with God and what He has in store in our life. And I think that if we do that, if we continually go back and start looking at why are we doing what we're doing and start looking at what motivates us, then we will continue and will actually successfully, like the other three or four people, complete a New Year's resolution. To this day, I have never completed a New Year's resolution. I think that my longest resolution has been about four months, and that was I was going to read the entire Bible. Now, I have read the entire Bible since then, but it was not in that year. And this year, that I'm making this weight loss challenge, I don't want to fail. I don't, I don't want to continually fail. Instead, what I want to do is, is succeed. And I, I think that 
God wants everybody in this room to succeed. I think that with the Bible and, and with the proper procedures or things in place that we can all succeed, that we can all be successful. And I think that if we work together and start telling other people the things that we're doing, we can actually achieve that. If you guys want to stand, we're going to continue in worship this morning.